Can, can I ask you a question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology? Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness. Um, it, is, it is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. Do you want to give anything you'd add? I don't think I would add much. I, yeah. I, it's, I think they are in early stages and, and, and probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. In, in the normal order of things, when you invest in research and development and begin a developmental project, uh, you don't have any intention or expectations that one would use it. Uh, on the other hand, the real world intervenes from time to time and you reach in there and take something out that is still in a developmental stage and you might use it. So it, the an I, it's not, your question is not answerable. It, is, it, is, uh, it depends on what happens in the future and how, how well things move along the track and whether or not someone feels it's appropriate to reach into a development stage and see if something might be useful, as was the case with the unmanned aerial vehicles. But you sound like you're willing to experiment with it. I, I think that's the point. And I think and it's, we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things, if there are new things available, and has been been willing to, to put them into the fight even before they've been fully wrung out. And I think that's uh, not referring to these two particular cases of directed energy or, or high-powered microwave, uh, but, but sure. And, yes. and we will continue to do that. The Hutchison effect. John Hutchison's work reproduces all of these same effects, all of them, more than the ones that I've even shown you. A summary of the type of uh, effect, jellification, things turn into jelly. And then when, the, when you turn the gizmo off, they re-solidify if they haven't separated completely. And recall the curved beams and columns that weren't kinked or buckled or crackled. Bent beams, slow bending of metals, shredded metal structures, fractured metal structures, peeling appearance, like the metal's just peeled open even though it's a, an extruded metal. Fusion of dissimilar materials, like um, paper, melt, looks like it's melted inside of steel. That's pretty weird. Thinning and rapid aging, lift or disruption, toasted looking metal, circular holes in material, like buildings, reduced mass of materials, rounded holes in glass, lather, there's a tremendous amount of, you know, weird fires. And then we have this fellow, George Piggott. He actually came up with this earlier. Do you realize 100 years today, his patent was granted on this technology.
today, 100 years. Here he is with his little bow tie on, observing his experiment. I think that's a, a, a kind of an interesting picture. He's got a static field generated. There's a Leyden jar somewhere. And he's got these balls suspended in that field. Levitation. Interesting, a static field. He applied for the patent in 1903. That was a long time ago. Thomas Townsend Brown did a lot of work on anti-gravity. Ed Leedscallon built Coral Castle in Florida. He's said to be, have been about 100 pounds, but he'd lift 15 ton stones. Somehow. Here's part of Coral Castle. Here's the Great Pyramid. John Hutchison. Now, notice this person is standing at the base, about a little over one stone, maybe almost two of these stones tall, a little less. About the same height as that doorway in Coral Castle. Turns out the size of these stones is just about the same as, or the weight is just about the same as those of the Great Pyramid. Some of the stones that Ed Leedskalden lifted were even heavier than the heaviest stones at the Great Pyramid. How do you do that? A 100 pound guy? He had a little tripod with a chain on it that couldn't have held very many pounds. But he had that gizmo with the magnetic uh, flywheel. Now we're going to look at a sample of John Hutchison's work. See, he's still amongst us. He had another birthday a few days ago. He can demonstrate this in the here and now. I can't go back and visit George Pigott or Nikola Tesla. But I can go visit John Hutchison and see a demonstration of this. And here's an iron block, two inches by two inches by seven inches tall, solid iron. This is uh, what it used to be. Um, this thing buckles over. Notice the fumes coming off of it. It'll come off partway through. And we saw fumes coming out of a door handle. See this door handle? This is at, uh, not on 9-11. Fumes. It's a broken window. If something needs to vent out, why doesn't it go out the window? <coughs> and John Hutchison's samples are a little bit cooler than ambient temperature after he's finished with them. It's not hot. Kind of reminds you of these, uh, what look to be fires, the Cheeto fires and Cheetos in the ground. They're orange, they're glowing, not necessarily hot. John has a boat, toy boat in the water. Notice when he turns the power off, you can see when it's going because the water jumps up. The boat goes into spontaneous combustion. So here's the he's got the signal going now, and then he turns it off, and the, then it ignites. Kind of like the toasted cars. They ignited after the tower was destroyed, immediately after. It's a plastic boat. What's catching on fire? This thing's kind of interesting. A solid piece of steel. Jelly. Now watch this piece of steel here, in this area, it'll come apart and move. He plugs this into a regular wall outlet. He's not efficient about it, he's not really a scientist, he just enjoys playing with this different type of technology. He tried to replicate the work of Nikola Tesla and he started discovering, hey this is fun. Let's see, we can make this thing fly up, up in the air. And so he does it with a sense of intuition and feel for how to mix the signals. 
What he does is create a static field, and within the static field, he interferes radio frequency signals, like microwave, as an example. It's not the microwave signal, and it's not the static field. It's the combination. It's kind of like a key opening a lock. There must be something